Joining me is Michael Aston. He was professor at Monash University School of Earth, Atmosphere and Environment. He was also an expert reviewer of a draft of the related IPCC Sixth Assessment Report. Michael Aston, thank you so much for your time. Um, this IPCC report says that the way we're going now, the world's going to be 1.5 degrees warmer in the next decade than it was about 200 years ago. Now, is this world warming at that speed? And is that unusual? Is it frightening? Well, good evening, Andrew. Nice to be with you. Um, but the world has already uh, warmed 1.1 degree since 170 years ago. And the world is a nicer place. 170 years ago, it was a little ice age. Now, having warmed up 1.1 degrees, if we warm another 0.4 of a degree, I don't see that that is a problem. And no, I am not frightened. Well, here's another thing, Michael. Um, last week, there was an article in the prestigious Science magazine, and it said... Climate scientists now have to face the fact the world isn't actually warming as fast as they'd been predicting, and it won't. And it said that the mathematical climate models that have helped them to project the future have grown a little too alarmist. And it actually quoted one of President Joe Biden's own science advisors, a uh, famous warmist, uh, warning that using these models means you end up with numbers for even the near term that are insanely scary and wrong. So... Is this report based on models that exaggerate the warming that we're likely to get? Well, look, there's a, uh, there's a discrepancy between models and observational studies, and that's been obvious since the year 2000. In the year 2000, uh, scientists started pointing out the divergence between the models and the observations. Um, it was very clear by 2017 what that divergence was. Um, key testimony of Professor John Christie of University of Alabama to a US congressional committee um, demonstrated that divergence between models and observation. It's even clearer now in 2021. The only real surprise to me is that it's taken so long for the establishment to admit that there is a problem. It seems to me that's absolutely clear, Michael, because I, I recall reporting this, I think, in the days when uh, Professor uh, uh, Bob Carter was still with us. I mean, at least a decade, I know, 11 years, 12 years, I've been saying this, and I'm, I'm, no, I'm not an expert. Uh, and, and now it's only now it's being acknowledged. Is it acknowledged in this report, do you know? Um, the... The divergence, um, I'm not sure yes, which, it, it, which part of the um, report yeah, you might I, be referring I to. Think, I think it probably is, and I think they talk about the hiatus, that uh, the flattening of the temperature curve that was there in the first uh, decade or so of this uh, century, but uh, you know, they discuss that, but I don't see much of a discussion about uh, the uh, the latest uh, research that came out like just last week. Now, can you tell me, given all this, right, given all this, what's your take out from this report? Um, well, there's a couple of things. The, the, I mean, the people who write these reports, they're atmospheric scientists in the majority. They acquire detailed temperature data, detailed atmospheric data, they model the relationship between them. Um, where we differ, them and me, they do not use data pre-1950. And, Andrew, this really is a key point, pre-1950. There's vital information on past cycles of temperature changes, both up and down, pre-1850. So one of, the, one of the key lacks in this report, I see it, is that lack of historical data. So that's my first take out. But um, then we, we come to look at the, um, the actual observational data of what we've got now. Uh, in the range 0.15 to 0.2 of a degree per decade, global temperature increase since 1980. 
Now, the report in one place talks of 0.24 degrees increase over 10 years. Press commentary talks of 0.3 of a degree, even bigger, over eight years, over a short time. This is all despite the fact that the report tells us we must consider 30-year averages of temperature. So there are discrepancies in the report um, aiming at taking small pieces of data in order to find a, uh, an accelerated global warming. The reality of this data, it's highly variable. Global temperature data, highly variable, even when it's been smoothed. Uh, and in 2021, fascinating observation is that the temperature, the global temperature has decreased to the same value it was 15 years ago, decreased to what it was 15 years ago. Now, the report ignores this, uh, ignores it completely, and I argue this is a significant flaw in logic. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, Roy Spencer has done some marvellous research. Uh, he's the one that's looking at the uh, some of the satellite data uh, for the NOAA satellites, uh, saying, well, look, the models are wrong, that uh, it, we're just not seeing the temperature rise like we, was, we were told. And I think it's time that a lot of more people came clean on that. Michael Lassen, thank you so much indeed for your 